The year was 1999. A hacker named Jonathan James was only 15 years old. He went from hacking his school network to change his grades to hacking NASA all by himself. He stole and downloaded $1.7 million worth of data and he did it all for fun. But sadly, it doesn't end well for Jonathan. This is his story. From a very young age, Jonathan, who was known online as Comrade, was very interested in computers. He started with video games, then moved to learning programming language, even changing the operating system on his dad's home computer because he was curious. During his teen years, he spent all of his free time on his computer, and at the age of 13, ran away from home because his parents took his computer away from him. They thought it was affecting his grades. He would only come home when he got his computer back. And he kept telling his parents that programming wasn't affecting his grades and showed them the high marks he was getting. They found out later that he would hack into the network of the educational institution and change his scores. Truly a smart kid. And when Jonathan reached 15, he stepped up his hacking game a bit and started targeting large companies. In June 1999, he was searching for vulnerable servers to connect to by bypassing firewalls and found one that belonged to a unit of NASA, the Marshall Space Flight Center. The unit is very important to NASA because this is the place where they develop and test rocket engines, as well as communication systems for the International Space Station. Jonathan gained access to a program source code which controlled the parts of the life support system on the International Space Station. The system was designed to maintain the physical environments in the rooms on the International Space Station and it was estimated to be worth millions of dollars. Once NASA discovered that their network was compromised, they disconnected the server for a period of three weeks to analyze the intrusion. This led to $40,000 in direct damages to NASA. In September of 1999, Jonathan was searching for other hacking opportunities and found a back door on a server that let every user on the internet connect to it. Without a second thought, he connected to the server and installed a sniffing program that intercepted all the network traffic that was going through the server. The server belonged to DTRA, Defense Threat Reduction Agency, a massive division of the US Department of Defense. John intercepted credentials of DTRA users, leading him to gaining access to dozens of computers of the Department of Defense and managing to download thousands of emails from users working for the Pentagon. With all his hacking success, his luck eventually ran out. And on January 26, 2000, agents raided his home and arrested him. They seized four PCs and laptops and one pocket computer from the house. This made Jonathan the first juvenile to be sentenced for computer hacking. During the investigation, it was found that Jonathan didn't run any viruses, delete files, or change any passwords of servers that he hacked into. He did not cause any damage to the compromised systems. And only being 16 at the time of his arrest worked out well for him. As if he were an adult, he could face up to 10 years in prison. Due to Jonathan being a juvenile and his cooperation with government officials, John received six months of house arrest for hacking NASA and the US Department of Defense. However, during this time, Jonathan was detained by police for breaking the terms of his house arrest due to drug use. He then got sentenced to six months of jail time. He told reporters he was going to stop hacking as it wasn't worth the hassle and he was just doing it for fun, like playing video games. After the six months in jail, Jonathan was released and started to live an ordinary life in his parents' house. That ordinary life didn't last for too long. And on January 2007, a hacking group that stole credit card details from major companies came to light. Now, you might be thinking, what does this have to do with Jonathan? Well, some of his colleagues and friends were apparently members of this group, which led investigators to think that Jonathan had some involvement. Also, there was an unknown person in the group known as JJ. They thought maybe that JJ stood for Jonathan James and issued a warrant to search his house. The agents could not find anything to connect Jonathan with the hacking group and dropped any warrants. 
It was later found that the unknown user, JJ, was Stephen Watts and used the name Jim Jones when he was online. The events caused Jonathan to fear depression. And sadly, on May 18th, 2008, Jonathan James was found dead in the bathroom of his home with a gunshot wound to the head. A suicide note was found near him with passwords of several accounts. The note has likely been altered online several times, but from what I have found, this is what the note said. Feel free to pause the video here if you would like to read it. Albert Gonzalez was known to be the leader of this hacking group that stole the credit card details from all the major companies, including TJX. Jonathan James will remain forever known in the hacking community for his pure hacking genius and his genuine character. I talk more about Albert Gonzalez in a separate video. If you're interested in that, click the video on screen.